Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at YarnSpirations.com. In today's tutorial we're going to do four through seven. So we're just going to pick up on this particular project and then we're going to begin and working four through seven. So it's going to take you through almost most of this uh, particular motif. You're going to do all of your motifs and then come back and then we're going to join. I'd uh, go back and do eight through nine together next time. So now let's get four through seven done. So in round number four we're now going to switch where we were finishing off. See how we were finishing off in number three this area here. We're going to come and we're just gonna eye up the outside one. So just kind of pull on it and you can kind of see where it's uh, making its oblong the most and you're just going to join it then to the one that we have here. So let's just look at this one stitch here. This is a back post double crochet so we're gonna go to the back post double crochet here and then that's where we're gonna start. We're going to start off really uniquely. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's kind of abnormal. It's, it breaks the rules of crochet but who cares right? It's Christmas. <laughs> so then you're going to skip this next stitch here and then bean stitch into the next. So it's, it's a bean, skip, bean, skip and so on. So let's begin round number four. Let's test, see if, if you know what you're doing. So let's begin. Just pull on it if you don't see where the edging could be and you're looking for a back stitch or a back post. Okay, so it's right here. Okay, so and I can kind of see this is kind of where we finished off before so it should be off to the side and you wanna start on a back post here. So what I want you to do is that I want you to start it off really kind of interesting. So you're going to create a slip knot. You can do that this time. Other times you couldn't and I want you to put it onto the hook and we're gonna break the rules of crochet. So watch how we do it. We're gonna come in the back post or sorry the back post stitch only and just go in that one. And what I want you to do is that I want you to scoop that yarn and pull it forward but do not pull it through the one that's already on the hook. And now you have two. That is gonna be your first single crochet. That's an exception. There is, um, this is breaking the rules of crochet. So we're gonna start off with the bean stitch. So this one that you just pulled through is considered the first part of the bean stitch. To do the remaining of the bean stitch you're gonna wrap the hook going into the same stitch and then just going in and then pull and then wrap and pull through. And you're going to do that one more time. So wrap and into the stitch and pull through. And I'll show this to you again. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pull through everything on the hook. Okay, so not just a uh, portion, pull through everything. So wrap and pull through everything. Now in the diagram it shows that there is two chains in between the bean stitch. So the first chain is going to lock it and the second chain is just to expand into the next one. So come into the next stitch that is the back post and let's bean stitch. So you're just gonna come into the stitch. So going in, yarning over pulling it through and then let's do uh, two of what we need to do to finish it. So we wrap the hook into the same stitch, pull through and then wrap and into the same stitch, pull through. Now that you have these all on your hook, there's a total of six loops, pull through all of the six, lock it, so there's chain one and then chain two and then move to the next one. So you're just looking for the back, the one that's the back post. So in, pull through, wrap and go through, pull through again, wrap and in, pull through, there's six loops again on the, the, the hook and then yarning pull it through in. So let's chain two. So the first one locks it, the second one expands. So I'm gonna show you one more time. So into the next one, pull through, wrap and in, pull through and wrap and in, pull through and then pull through all, all of six and then chain one locks it and two progresses around. I want you to do that all the way around. There will be a total account of 20 of these bean stitches all the way around. Please do that now for round number four. So I'm coming all the way back around. I got my last bean stitch. I'm going to chain one to lock, chain two to progress and when I go to join it, watch this. This is so important. See how that it's kinda coming in and it's locked that's where you wanna join it. If you join it here, it'll pull this apart. 
you wanna keep it so that the bean looks consistent and that's where you wanna go. So what I want you to do is just slip stitch that through, get rid of this yarn and we're gonna progress into round number two. Round number two is a really fun, or round number five, sorry. Um, I'm thinking because it's a fresh tutorial we're going on to round two. So this is really cool. So you can weave in your ends pretty much with this one here and just weave it in and out of some of the stitch work and then we're gonna progress to round number five. I think you're gonna love round number five because it's one of my favorite rounds. So let's begin round number five. So what we have here is that it's another bean stitch. So what we're going to do is that we are going to join it, okay, and we're going to join it right into this section here. Okay, see this points, it was hard for Daniel to do that. So everything is going into these ones that we've been skipping over when we did the last bean stitch. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna bean right over top of this chain, trap it underneath and then you'll lock it in and then put your chain so you put your chains and then come into the next one skipping right over top. So there's gonna be a total of 20 bean stitches there too. So let's begin to do that one and let's see how you do. So keeping it up so it's oblong and you just wanna go to the one that's been skipped. Okay, you can go to that one or this one. It really kinda of doesn't matter too much. And uh, so you'll, in the later on in the tutorial, you'll be able to see where things make sense uh, to be able to eye it up in order to get number seven to be right. So I'm gonna go right into this one. So I'm just gonna already have it on the hook as a slip knot. And I am going to do the same trick I did before. So I'm just gonna wrap it and pull through. And I got two loops on the hook. That is gonna be my first part of the bean stitch. So now you're gonna wrap the hook and coming into the same one and pull through and wrap and in and pull through and you have your six loops again, pull through all six. And chain one will lock it, one and two and then move to the next one. So you're gonna come immediately into here and you're gonna trap that one so it sandwiches it down. So just coming into the next one, going right up over top of that pink one, do you see that? Pull through and then going in and doing the bean stitch as you know it. So what this is doing, it's doing a visual break of that pink to make it look more polka dotty, right, or more um, dotted line. So one to lock, two to progress. So coming into the next one and you're gonna bean. You will get pretty fast at this and then pull through all of them. One to lock, two to progress. I want you to do that all the way around so these uh, items here will be resting right in between the pinks. Now as you get back around to number five, you're gonna notice it's kind of buckling up on you. Do not worry about that, okay? So don't, it will settle out. The reason why that's happening is that we started off with the novel and then the next few rounds that we've done, the next four, we have not done anything on the ends to make the oblong shape continue. So it wants to naturally buckle in but it's gonna fix itself in the future. So I've got my last bean stitch, so one to lock, two to progress. Again, the same thing like I showed you with the pink. Do not fasten off onto the top here. Go right where the two are being locked in. Do you see that? Also being locked in right there. And then pull through and through. Weave in your ends and the, let's begin then round number six together. So let's progress into round number six. So just eyeing up where you think that it's going to go and this here is just going to be one single crochet in the top of the bean stitch and then there's going to be two single crochets into the chain two space. So one into the bean, two into the space and you're gonna do that all the way around. There's no difference for where you are in this. It's gonna be the same. So you're continuing the circle to be made and then round number seven we get back into the oblong shape. So let's begin round number six. So let's begin round number six. I'm gonna create a slip knot because I can and what I want to do is that I wanna go in the top of the last bean stitch. So just kinda follow it up and go right into the top of one of those. So you have to decide where you're going to go into the bean stitch. I'm recommending where you joined it, those kind of spaces. So do you see how it's kinda coming in around? That's the top of the bean stitch. This is your chain two. So just coming up right into the end, go into the top and let's just join it. So just pulling it through. So you get your two loops there and then just pull through the two and then that's a single crochet. It's kind of breaking the rules of crochet but I don't care. So what we have here is that the chain two is that there's gonna be two single crochets in it. So one and two. The bean stitch is next. So you have to go into the same spot to stay consistent. So it's right here. And then the next chain two space is two single crochets. So please do that all the way around 
for round number six. So I'm coming up to the end of round number six and I'm just going around the last chain two space and I'm going to join it to the top of the or to the beginning single crochet and then fasten off. So you can kind of pull on it now and you see it's almost sitting flat. So you can see what happened is is that these two single crochets in between the, the beans forces the stitches to, to push out. So even though it was kind of buckling before it will now start unbuckling and it will continue to unbuckle even more. So it's gonna uh, lay nice and flat for you pretty much at this stage. Get rid of these loose ends and let's go on to round number seven the final for today's tutorial. Okay this is your final for this tutorial today. So what you're going to have is that we're going to start off in the top of the first um, single crochet that kind of where we finished off before and we're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet and then the next two are trebles and I know what you're thinking. Well this is trouble. why is that uh, uh, representing a double? Just the way it shapes when you're done this looks better if this is a chain three instead. So that's why I did that. So technically this should be a chain four but when I did that it looks like sin <laughs> to put it mildly. Then there's gonna be two double crochets in a row then two halves and then 21 of these single crochets around. Then two halves, two doubles and the next one will have three trebles and then two doubles, two halves and then 21 back across, two halves, two doubles and join. It's really not that hard. So what you have to just do is keep an eye on your counts. Make sure you get your 21's and let's begin to do the final round for this part of this series. Let's do number seven. So let's begin round number seven. Just for absolute transparency this color that I'm about to use is not in this afghan. Um, I can't find one of my colors. I don't know why. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go into the top of the first single crochet where we finished off. You notice that it's still in line with the work. So you're gonna come into there and you're just going to join it. So you notice that I never created a slip knot first. So I just coming in through and I wanna chain a total of three. So one, two, three and this is gonna count as a treble for this time only. In the same one that I did the join I wanna treble and I wanna treble twice and go right up over top of that straggler to trap that into position. So that was one treble and treble one more time. So with the chaining of three and the two trebles that gives you your point at the end. The next two in a row continue going up over the straggler is gonna be a double crochet. The next two in a row are each going to be a total of two half double crochets. And now I'm gonna let the straggler fall. 21 in a row will each be a single crochet. I'm gonna stay with you with this one. So let's count it out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, that was gonna be twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21 single crochets in a row. Now we're gonna continue to get a little bit bigger now so the next two will be halves. So one and two. Okay the next two in a row will each be a double and then finally you're back at the point. Okay so the point's here. So if you kind of look at it it's directly across. So let's get that point. So there's gonna be three trebles into the next one. So we have one, two, and three. Now the next two in a row we're gonna get smaller again is gonna be a double. So one, and two and then the next two are halves. So one and two and then 21 again. So let's stay with you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Okay, so we have a total of, should be four stitches left, which is true. So one, two, three, and four. So we got a half, and I'm gonna show you a trick too. And a half, and there's two left. I wanna show you a trick. When you go to slip stitch stuff, it tends to leave a gap. So I want you to double crochet the next one, which you should be, but watch what I'm gonna do. See the space is looking a little bit too big. This is completely cheating, but again, this is Christmas. <laughs> I've really given free stuff away, free ideas. So what I would do, if I were you and you were me, and you will not see this because it's in my afghan, the next two I would put together. So just wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through, and then pull through two and hold it. This is not a stitch. This is part of the slip stitching over. So just go wrap the hook and going into that same spot, pull through, then pull through two and hold it. And therefore you have three loops on the hook, pull through all three. And that, that last one plus the spacing makes it only one stitch. Therefore you don't lose any counts and then you slip stitch it to the top of the chain three. And that is a way to fill it in to make it look like it belongs. I know completely cheating. So that's it for today's tutorial. This is going to be uh, leaving you off at round number seven. Get all of your motifs done and then we're going to come back and we're going to do eight, nine, or sorry, going to do eight, nine, and ten is the final joining rounds that we'll get into and that'll be next time. So weave in your ends at this time and we'll see you next time here on the Christmas Boho Stitch Along.